Hello, my name is Kinza Rizwan, and today I'll be talking to you about TXY Diagram. So TXY Diagram and PXY Diagram, both are very useful in um, representing data uh, calculated or experimental uh, VLE data, vapor liquid equilibrium data. So before I show you guys a TXY Diagram, I would like to define basic terminology that we will encounter on a TXY Diagram. So the first is boiling curve or boiling point. This is where we have all of our mixture in liquid phase, so all of it is in liquid phase, and we encounter the first vapor form, the first bubble or vapor forming. And dew curve is where we have all um, of our mixture in vapor phase, and we encounter the first liquid droplet form. And um, VLE, which is short for vapor liquid equilibrium, is where we have both phases, vapor and liquid, uh, existing. So basically we have vapor and liquid um, in coexistence. So the uh, TXY diagram that I'm about to show you is a TXY diagram of a binary, it's gonna represent a binary mixture of component one and component two in uh, vapor liquid equilibrium. So basically component one and component two could be anything, but let's say that uh, component one has a boiling point which is less than that of component two. So that means component one is more volatile than component two. So now let's go ahead and look at our TXY diagram. Our TXY diagram um, on the y-axis is where our temperature is. So you can tell our temperature is a variable, our temperature is changing. So that means our pressure is constant. Usually you'll be given a value for pressure and you'll be told that um, the system is going to operate at that specific pressure only. And then um, on the x-axis, we have the molar composition of component 1 in the mixture, and the mixture of the component 1 and 2. So the x will tell us about the liquid composition of component 1 in the mixture, and y1 will tell us about the vapor composition of component 1 in the mixture. So this will go from zero to one. And as I said earlier, since, we, uh, since component one is more volatile, so the boiling point or the T1 set for component one is right here. And um, boiling point for um, component two is given right here. And as we know that as we, uh, as we heat something more and more, it turns into liquid. So at the bottom, we have subcooled liquid region. So, and as we heat it more, we reach the vapor region. So all of it is vapor. So let's say we have any, let's say we have a composition, I'm gonna call it X, X star. And we start heating the system. Over here, we reach a point, which is called the, uh, which is called the boiling point. So that's where all of it is liquid and we see the first vapor. Now let's say we're coming the opposite way. We're decreasing the temperature of the system, and then we reach this point called the dew point, where all of it is vapor, and we witness the first liquid droplet forming. And um, now let's say we have we are given the overall composition of the mixture. Um, we're going to call that Z. So the overall composition of um, component A in the mixture, let's call it Z. And now let's say we're heating the system up. So we are heating the system, and then we reach the boiling point. So at this point, we have um, all of liquid, but then we start seeing the first vapor forming, and then we continue heating it. And now we are in the vapor-liquid equilibrium region. So in this system, as we heat more and more, the more of um, the more of component one turns into the vapor. So now let's say we are at this point, and we want to determine component one's um, composition in vapor phase and in liquid phase. So what we are gonna do is draw a tie line, a vapor, a vapor liquid equilibrium tie line. So it's a horizontal tie line that intersects both the bubble or the bo boiling curve and the dew curve. And the point where it intersects the uh, boiling curve is where we will find its liquid composition. So I'm just gonna call it, yeah, liquid composition. 
and the point where it intersects the new curve is where we will find its vapor composition. And now let's say we heat it more and more. So as we heat it more and more, it gets more of it is in vapor phase, and we reach the dew point. At dew point, all of it is basically in um, vapor phase, but we need that last droplet of water to turn into vapor phase. To vapor phase. So we heat the temperature just a little more, and once it's past that curve, it's past that dew curve, we have all of it in vapor phase. So over here, it'll be in vapor phase. So at this point, all um, at this point, all of um, all of component one with this composition is in liquid phase, and at this point, all of um, component one with this composition is in um, is basically in vapor phase. Hello, my name is Darius Harris, and today I'll be talking about PXY diagram. So for this diagram, we'll be using a binary mixture of component one and component two, your vapor and liquid regions. Um, we're going to assume that temperature is constant, and the only variables that are changing are going to be the compositions and the pressure aligned with them. So on the Y axis, we have our pressure, and then on our um, X axis, we have component one, which is X of one, and we have component two, which is Y of one. This is for the liquid phase, and this is for the vapor phase. So on our graph, we have, we have our liquid region, which is X of one, and this is, and then above this liquid region would be compressed liquid, because the, the pressure is increasing. And then right here, as um, the pressure decreases, we hit this point, and this is our bubble point. And um, this is where the first vapor is formed. This right here in the middle is our vapor liquid equilibrium, or BLE for short. This is where vapor and, and um, liquid are coexist in our equilibrium. If we decrease the pressure a little bit more, we reach our dew point or our dew curve. And this is where the first droplet of liquid is formed. So if you look over here, at this point, this is the um, saturated pressure for um, component one. And over here, um, P2, sat, this is saturated pressure for um, component two. So let's say we have a, compo uh, a percent co composition of Z. So, and it's in, it's in a liquid phase. So let's draw our point at the bubble curve and then define um, our composition in the vapor phase, we're going to draw a tie line, so, just like so. And this would be our composition for vapor at C composition. I'm Charles Kell, and I'm going to be talking about Routes Law. So let's assume we have a binary mixture of component A and component B in BLE. So since we know that this is um, in equilibrium with liquid and vapor, we can assume that the fugacity of liquid is equal to fugacity of vapor for one of the components. If we get the partial pressure for each side, we'll get Y of A times pressure well, actually pressure as a whole, and then we'll get um, X of A times the saturate pressure. This gives us Routes Law. And um, when we have ideal gas, that's the first assumption in Routes Law. That basically means that we're gonna use moderate to low pressures. And the second assumption is ideal solution theory. That means that the chemical structure and size are going to be similar for the two components. And if we manipulate Routes Law, we can get the dew pressure, which would be just the pressures associated with this curve, and um, also the bubble pressure, which is the pressures along this upper curve right here. Now, so when our bubble curve is linear, we know it follows Routes Law. And um, in this case, our bubble curve is not linear and it bubbled out and there's a deviation from this line. This is accounted for by this activity coefficient and it's gamma. This gives us the modified Routes Law. And um, this would account for this deviation right here in solution theory, ideal solution theory. 
and um, if we manipulate this equation algebraically, we can get the new dew pressure um, equation and also bubble pressure equation. And um, if we have a deviation with ideal gas theory, then we'll use phi to correct that. But this is less common than ideal solution theory because it's more likely for us to have um, difference in shape and size and for the two components to behave differently chemically. But um, overall, Routes law shows us this, um, shows us the relationship between pressure and um, the vapor and liquid compositions.